I am always looking for good watercolor sketchbooks, good watercolor books that I can kind of take with me on the go. And for a long time, I've really felt like my options are kind of limited. I know Kilimanjaro makes a spiral bound book. So I know there are some cotton rag papers available, but it seems like the vast majority of watercolor sketchbooks or watercolor handbooks are made using cellulose paper. So for today, we're gonna take a look at this handmade watercolor book. I believe I got it off of Amazon. Um, and I will make sure I link where I got it and what it is in the description below. But it is a handmade watercolor book, archival quality, acid-free drawing papers, 100% cotton fiber, internally and surface size, 140 pound paper, 48 decal edge pages. And I, I guess they're counting back and forth. So really 24 if you don't like to paint on the back and six and a half by six and a half. Now this is made by Handbook Journal Company, made by Global Arts. So they make fluid and fluid 100 watercolor papers. And this was produced in the Punjab region of India from post-consumer rate waste. And I've been kind of holding this, holding on to this, take a look at it with you guys. Cause I'm sure some of you are also looking for good travel options or good study options for watercolor. All right, so it's, this looks like it's leather, but I think it's really compressed paper, which is fine. A little bit stiff. And it really reminds me of um, Shizen paper. In fact, in another review, I know I've talked about Shizen on this channel before, but in an upcoming review, we're going to be taking a look at their smooth and their regular watercolor papers because I'm always trying to kind of expand. So this looks like it is stitch bound. I'll try to find one of the signatures for you guys. And it appears to be nice, heavy watercolor paper. Like I said, really reminiscent of Shizen watercolor paper. So I've been wanting to do more studies, more floral studies, that sort of thing. Um, just get some practice in. So I think this might be a great contender for practicing some of my brush jokes. Now it says it's six and a half by six and a half. It really looks a little bit smaller than that. I'm gonna grab a ruler really quick. Yeah, it's really, I mean, it does have a deckled edge. So we'll give it the widest to the widest. We'll go there. It's still shy of six. So it's not even six and a half. With the binding, it's still shy of six and a half. So it's a little bit smaller than that. And the pages are not uniformly sized. So I would say they're just generally going to be smaller than six and a half by six and a half. For today's demonstration, we're going to use the Yarka St. Petersburg test because it has some really nice sort of floral colors in here that should be useful. This isn't a review of either. Um, I would have to do a lot more painting in this for this to be a full review, but it can be a nice first look. And then I can check in with you guys again later once I've kind of decided. This is also not a tutorial. I'm just practicing some brushwork that I haven't really had a chance to practice too much. So I hope you guys will enjoy. So this is a little weird. I'm trying to turn the first page over, right? And I would say I've lost about a half inch because it's glued or something. I don't know if it's because this is a little damp, but it doesn't want to turn fully. So I think I'm going to do another watercolor study. And I'm just going to do another peony. Peonies are my favorite flower. I enjoy looking at them and 
my cat would destroy any that I brought into my home. So this is sometimes the only way I can enjoy the things that I enjoy. And I've got notes for you guys on what I think of this paper. But for the second one, I'm going to go ahead and use some smooth brushes and some Chinese calligraphy brushes. <laughs> So I just unclipped this page and I'm not sure if it was like this before or if I'm just noticing it because this one has a little bit more saturated colors, but there's a lot of like feedback lines on this from the texture of the paper. I like how it looks, but if that's something that bothers you, then, you know, any kind of paper with this much texture is probably not a good pick for you. What? 
So that should give you a pretty good idea of how the Global Arts Handmade Watercolor Book handles with a variety of different uh, illustrations. Well, I say a variety, but really just several different illustrations, most of which are of flowers. Do a quick flip through. I noticed as I progressed through the book, it got harder to work in this book. And that is because it's got a really thick spine but it can't really open. Maybe if I'd like broken the book in a little bit better. So that could be something you want to consider. So I'm going to go over the stats again with you guys. Um, made by Global Arts. This is the six inch by six inch. It's available in six inch by nine, eight by eight, nine by, well, nine by six, uh, nine by 12, 11 by 15, and 12 by nine. It's acid-free archival with handmade paper made from recycled material, made in India, 48 double-sided pages, so 24 double-sided sheets, and it's made from cotton. I found that the paper behaves a lot like Shizen, so if you like Shizen paper, you'll enjoy this paper. It can hold a lot of water. It has a very rough tooth with lots of feedback, so you get a lot of like the white areas, lots of sparkle to the page when you apply water. The size is a little limiting, but it could be great for floral studies like we did here. Um, I was able to achieve good slash interesting color movement on this paper, so it could be good for loose studies. Uh, these, it stays wet for a really long time, which can be great for wet into wet, uh, wet, into wet blends. Um, it probably does take too long to dry for field work, but I like how the paper handles. When dry, though, the colors are kind of speckly. I'll find a few examples for you guys. So like this one being the prime one. So it's like noise or static. I know I didn't get like terrible coverage and I tried to show you guys the kind of coverage I was getting. The water seemed pretty well dispersed. So why does the paper dry so speckly? This isn't just the valleys and hills of the paper. So that kind of killed some of the enjoyment for me just because, you know, some of the static kind of disrupts the images I've painted. Um, so it's probably good for practicing brushwork, which is what I've been using it for, or for practicing wet into wet techniques. Now, due to how this book is constructed, you have to fold, and this one's a really good example of that, you have to fold prior pages about an inch into the illustration to get clearer access to the newest page. This means past illustrations get creased or may flake. And as I progress through the book, it becomes increasingly difficult for me to use as we get to the middle of the binding because the binding doesn't really bend or give. And I spent $32.59 for this on Amazon. 
which is a little bit pricey considering the problems. I'm always on the lookout for a good book bound cotton rag paper that I can do studies in, but price is really an, op an issue for me. So I think in the future, I'm gonna give the spiral bound Kilimanjaro paper a try. I think I'm gonna like that a lot better than what I thought of this. So I hope this review was helpful, useful, and informative for you guys. If you enjoyed it, make sure you leave a like or a comment. If you've used this handbook yourself, feel free to share your art in the comments below. I'd love to see what you do with this book or any of the larger sizes. If you have any recommendations for what I can do about the speckling, other than, you know, saturate the paper, the, let me know that as well. I did notice it was less prevalent when I added more layers, but I was really trying to practice kind of loose, uh, fresher sort of watercolor because I tend to work really heavy handed and I tend to over render. So I wanted to use this to practice a different type of technique. Now, maybe this paper is just totally wrong for that. So if that's the case, let me know that as well. And if you have any recommendations for cotton rag watercolor papers that are, would be good for like practice, let me know that as well because I'm always on the lookout and really my favorites right now are Blick Premier cotton rag paper and Kilimanjaro cotton rag paper because they're both very affordable papers that handle really really well so I'm looking for something kind of like that um, if you are looking for more watercolor content stick around consider subscribing make sure you hit that little bell I do loads of watercolor tutorials and reviews here on this channel in addition to comic stuff so if either of those sound great become one of my art nerds and join the community. And if you're looking for even more watercolor content, head on over to natosoup.blogspot.com and check out my watercolor basics series. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you again really soon. Bye guys.